Good evening, everybody. Sammy Thunder here. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to the start of the week. This has been rolling along nicely. Uh, I've gotten some more submissions consistently each week. Uh, I've got a couple of newcomers as well, I believe, that are going to be sharing tonight. Um, so I'm making this video today, which is Sunday from Monday. I'm going to be working a lot over the course of the week, so it's going to be tough for me to... Uh, make videos on the fly, so I'm kind of preparing this ahead of time. Um, if you haven't seen my live stream that I did on Saturday, or yesterday for that matter, uh, this is the new setup. As you could tell, it's a lot wider in depth. I uh, wanted to kind of, uh, kind of make it that way, just to kind of, I think there's a little bit more of a comfort level, less, uh, less claustrophobic, I guess you could say. So I wanted to kind of uh, adopt that into my videos going forward. Uh, so for tonight, I think we have five or six submissions, and and I do want to encourage anybody that wants to share their cards. That's the whole premise of this um, this series that I've created. You can email me at semithundercards at gmail dot com. Uh, I'd recommend just pick, uh, picking one card you'd like to showcase. You could talk a little bit about it. Um, just need your first name. If you want to share your last name, that's fine. Um, Essentially, I will <laughs> go through. Excuse me. I'll go through the submissions. Pick out five or six. If I don't get to yours, please do not be discouraged. Um, I try to get everybody's in. So, um, but generally, five or six is usually what I pick, just because I have to do a little bit of research on each card to provide some insight on it. But um, definitely email me here, SammyThunderCards at gmail.com, if you'd like to share yours. So let's jump right into, you can kind of see off to my left, um, you got the little bit of a cheat sheet on my monitor, but let's jump into it. So this one comes from Rocket Rick. Um, if you guys are unfamiliar with this channel, uh, you can subscribe to him. Rick has an incredible collection, got a chance to hang out with him today at Garfield. Uh, at the Garfield show, it was his first time visiting there, and he brought some really awesome stuff, more to come. And uh, got a chance to see this card in person, actually, the 1951 Burke Ross panel. Uh, the pop report states that there are 24 of these graded. Um, I think the four is the lowest in this case, uh, based on what SGC reports. Uh, this one has a pop of two, and then there's 22 higher, obviously, from there. Um, Burke, as far as the Burke Ross, I had some notes here. Let me see what I wrote or what I have. Um, this comes from one of the websites that report it. Um, they were issued as two-card panels and released in four separate series with 18 cards in each. So you'd find them in a box with a perforation kind of um, between the, uh, you can kind of see between the DiMaggio and the Hamner here. Um, so generally you would find these separated. So uh, to find them together is a little little rarer to find, but it, they're out there. Um, so based on what I'm reading here, uh, general, generally, like a lot of these were distributed in um, a, in a common way. Like I guess, uh, you know, I guess you can order them. I'm not 100% sure about this set, but um, what I understand here is that this was made available through a single dealer by the name of Bruce Yiko or Yako. I'm not sure of the pronunciation. He was one of the first full-time dealers and had exclusive rights to the distribution of the boxes, which is interesting. Uh, they, were they were originally available through his catalog for about 20 bucks, And um, it, they say, well, it's not sure how many sets were produced. It is believed that several hundred boxes were ultimately made available. And so it's kind of cool. Rick has this one for himself. He's a big Yankees collector, and the DiMaggio obviously fits in that collection nicely. And it was great to see this in person, I think, it, um, just a, a fun find to add to a collection. So, Rick, awesome to see you again today. Thank you for submitting your uh, Burke Ross panel. And um, looking forward to seeing you again in the future. This one belongs to John. John submits a lot with us and uh, continues the trend here with this. Another 51 Burke Ross, except this time this one was separated. Uh, the Stan Musial... Um, 51 Burke Ross, and uh, based on the pop report, we have 84 total graded. Uh, there's a pop of 2.5 and a 4. Or, uh, four of them were graded in a 2.5, and there are 63 higher. So uh, 
Another fun fact about the Burke Ross, uh, the cards are numbered by their series. So you have number 1-1, 1-18, uh, I'm sorry, 1-1 through 1-18. That's the first series. 2-1, 2-18 is the second, and so on. Um, generally what they say is that the baseball subjects are found on the first 10 cards in each series. So making the baseball set complete at 40. Um, I think it was mentioned. I could be wrong. It might be... No, I'm confusing sets. I was going to make make a, an assessment on something, but confusing sets. Uh, so it's kind of cool. There, I guess this you know has a window, has a small set window, which makes it um, appealing for collectors, I guess, to go out and find these cards. Uh, I know they can get pretty pricey at times. So, uh, But this is a really nice stand card. I like the look of it. Um, I like the green. I like the way he's fielding um, in, in his position. Uh, the background as well, like the depth behind him. It, I can't really tell if it's you know, if like trees or, uh, but you got like brush and trees behind it. It looks like, but really just an overall beautiful card. It's a must for I think any stand collector or really any vintage collector for that matter. Burke Ross, a highly uh, a desirable set. I think people really do enjoy this set a lot. Um, and definitely it's going to be one that I'll keep my eye on for, uh, like the Willie Mays, I think, is, I can't remember if he's in the 51, I know he's in the 52, but yeah, just something to think about. Anyway, uh, John, thank you for submitting this Burke Ross. This is a really cool, really cool find and a really cool piece in your collection. So this one belongs to Phil. Uh, this is the 1952 Star Decals of Jackie Robinson. And I've seen these a number of times at shows. Uh, I haven't seen the Jackie. I've seen the Willie Mays. And um, this is a cool set, uh, especially when you find it within the envelope. I've seen them without it. Um, but this one, based on what I've read, the My Record Company of Chicago produced two sets of Star Call baseball card decals in 52. Uh, the Type 1, which is what Phil has here, consists of 68 different major league players, each picturing a single player on a large four and one eighths by six and one eighths decal. Um, so there's 68 different cards total from this set, and but really it comes out to 70 because um, <clears throat> it sounds like, excuse me, there were two different Ted Williams and two different Stan Musial decals made. So you get variations, so it brings the total to about 70. Um, I was kind of on the verge of getting the Willie Mays, but never uh, found myself to do it yet. It's a cool looking item, again, unique collectible. Uh, based on PSA's pop report, it shows that there's 40, I think, of these um, with the envelope. So, um, and it, I didn't, I just put pop report of 40. I didn't see any number grades based on that. I guess 40 authentics is the best way to look at, I guess, is the outcome. but. Uh, Phil, great card, man. Uh, great, great buy. Uh, super, super stoked that you have this. Um, for any, again, any Jackie collector or any vintage collector who likes to collect unique stuff out of the box, this is definitely a good piece. So my uh, buddy Colin, I've seen him before at various shows. Colin submitted the Nobody Beats the Wiz Yankee sets, Yankees of the 80s. These full sheets were had the... Um, perforation for each card so you can kind of rip them out and build a set that way. Um, it looks like Colin uh, found these all in one, which is nice. Um, it's just a cool piece to find. I think I've seen, I've seen something similar at shows with the Mets. I haven't seen the Yankees one, but this is a cool piece. Uh, I don't think it's too expensive. I think it's, you can get them pretty, uh, you know, uh, without breaking the bank. So, um, Colin, thanks for sharing, man. This is a cool piece, uh, cool, like a nice little, it's from 1992, from what I did my research on, and it has all the big star players in there. He was really, you know, his big guy is, uh, Don, uh, Don Mattingly, who's in there, and I believe Yogi Berra, you know, all the really big names are in there, Mantle's in there, Roger Maris, and so forth. Um, so, yeah, Colin, thanks for sharing, man. I appreciate that. This one, this card needs no introduction, James, um, the 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle, one of the, the one of the biggest cards in the hobby. Uh, a lot of people are uh, classify this as like the you know, the most desirable mantle card um, in the hobby. But 
you know, one could argue that, you know, the 51 Bowman is arguably more popular, but I mean, it's here nor there. This card is fantastic. Um, rookie high number. This is in the, looks like it's an old SGC slab, but uh, based on the pop report, there's 672 with SGC total, 73 and a 1, and 481 um, higher. Um, as we know, I believe the mantle that sold in a 9.5, was it? Sold for 12 million, over 12 million. So, um, I mean, this is a card that I've, you know, I've seen at the larger shows. Uh, it's truly something that catches every collector's eye. Hard to resist. Um, I know some content creators that are looking to add this to their collection ultimately. I know a few that have them, that have one. Um, so, I mean, James, unbelievable card, probably one of the, uh, the biggest cards in your, uh, collection. I mean, just an absolute classic to have. So congratulations on owning this. Uh, Jeremy brings here the 1934 R310 Butterfinger of Lefty Grove. This is pretty unique. Uh, let me see my notes. Okay. So uh, the Butterfinger photographs were nearly 8 by 10 in size. Uh, they featured black and white images and replica signatures on the front. They were distributed in 5 cent Butterfinger candy bars. A total of 65 of the premiums are included in the set. Um, most, I guess, they were uh, blank backed, but apparently there are some that are seen with the names of the candy stores on the reverse. That's pretty cool. So this one is Love Left Lefty Grove. This has a pop of 15 with PSA with eight in a one and seven graded higher. Um, really a special set. I don't know too much about that. I mean, I think it's kind of cool, you know, when you start kind of tracing back the history of all these candy bars and how these came to exist, it's fun to kind of dig deep into the history of it, to learn more about the company, uh, learn more about the Butterfinger, to understand, um, you know, how this came to be, where could you find them, were they regional, were they nationwide? So that's pretty cool. Um, and this one, just a, like, it kind of reminds me a little bit of the Leaf Premium from 1949. Obviously, it's 15 years later, uh, but similar without the signature. Uh, National Chickle, I think, had stuff like that. I mean, um, what is it? The, I think the National Chickle had something similar, smaller in size, but uh, just a cool item, Jeremy. I mean, thank you for submitting this. Um, this is just a uh, really cool item to have in a collection, so... Um, Appreciate you sharing, and uh, definitely look forward to more in the future. And I believe that is it. So, very cool submissions overall. Uh, again, if you're interested in sharing, my email address is here above. Now, we'll go over to some of the pickups I made at Garfield. Uh, not really pickups, these are more gifts from uh, my buddy Rick, uh, Rocket Rick. So, let's go over and check it out. So... Here's the first one he, that he, uh, he gave me. This will go great in my uh, binder of gifts that I haven't really shown yet. But um, it's, you know, classic 1972 Willie Mays sliding. And, um, yeah, the in-action shots. So really nice of Rick to do this. Didn't have to, but Rick is just super generous, super, super nice guy. And uh, gave me this really cool Willie Mays 72 in action to add to my Willie Mays collection. And I have a great spot for this in my binder to put this in. I look forward to adding that in there. And he also threw in as well this $50 score, 1989 uh, of Doc Gooden um, in the, from the Marietta Baseball Card Shop. Although this could have just been slipped into a uh, card saver that he had lying around to make sure it, uh, it was protected in the top loader. But Doc Gooden, one of my guys, uh, I have my sculpture of the Doc right here with the autograph in there. Go nicely with, uh, yeah, let's, let's, go, let's go this way. <laughs> How about that? Right on cue. Looks great together. 
So yeah, those are the those are the two things that Rick got from uh, Rick gave me today. It was really generous of him to do that. It was cool hanging out with him, and uh, good hanging out with Mookie as well. Got a chance to hang out, chit chat. Uh, find some cool stuff, which I'm sure Mookie will share in his channel. Um, I don't think Rick found any much, but uh, gave him gave him a cool gift as well. And I think he'll maybe maybe he'll share. No pressure if he watches this. But thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. Look forward to your submissions next week, and we'll catch up later. All right, take care, everybody.